and welcome to Good Friday service. Um, maybe people are trickling in. Uh, so why don't we spend this time just preparing our minds and our hearts for worship today. Um, you know, I, as you guys are meditating, um, it's one thought that I wanted to share uh, that came across my mind today was, um, you know, the work is already finished. Uh, so then why do we why do we remember and celebrate Good Friday? And, um, you know, I, I think God was reminding me that the act of remembering, it was very important, is very important to his people. Um, you know, even in the Old Testament, you know, people celebrate um, events year after year to remember the things the Lord has done for them. So even today, we know that the work is finished, but we still want to remember uh, what Jesus Christ did for us. Uh, and so in that remembrance, let's prepare our hearts and our minds, uh, and we'll begin uh, very shortly. Father in heaven, we, we come together here to, um, well, first and foremost, because you call us, uh, and we want to thank you for that invitation. Um, today, we want to remember uh, out of the many, uh, many things in our lives, out of, um, you know, your greatness and your goodness uh, and everything you do for our lives, uh, we want to remember the work of Jesus Christ that is already complete, uh, but we want to remember in Thanksgiving, we want to remember in uh, repentance as well, Father, for, for our sins and, and the reason why uh, Jesus had to come to this earth. Uh, and, and Father, we also want to uh, just lift up ourselves as a continual worship to you. Uh, whether it's Good Friday or not, I, we just pray that, you know, um, our lives and our, and our lifestyle, our worship to you will never, will never cease. And uh, it'll be sincere and honest uh, throughout. Uh, Father, we're facing very difficult times right now. Uh, we're, we're moving back online, um, you know, this, this whole world is in a pandemic still, uh, and uh, we may be in a place where we're getting frustrated more and more, but um, Lord, in, in the hardest of times, may your light shine uh, brightest and help us uh, to move forward uh, and be set apart uh, from the people of this world in terms of our thanksgiving and our knowledge of what we do have, our riches and uh, our sufficiency in Christ, uh, no matter what our situation. Uh, so as we worship today, uh, may the Spirit really fill us, our minds and our hearts, uh, with the work uh, that has been finished. We thank you, we love you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, if you guys can have your cameras on, I think the bandwidth will be okay. Uh, but if not, uh, you guys are free to uh, remain uh, cameraless. Let's worship together um, for Good Friday service.
deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the
once my great opponent Fear once had a hold on me But the Son who died to save us Rose that He would be free in me Death was once my great opponent Fear once had a hold on me But the Son who died to save us Rose that we would be free in Yes, He rose that we Father, um, as we remember you, uh, we know that the work is already finished on the cross, uh, but we want to remember you. We want to come before you at this time uh, with heavy hearts uh, for, I guess, our constant rebellion towards you day in and day out, uh, but also with the reassurance that, um, you know, our, our Savior has paid for us since past, present, and future, and that uh, our identity is rooted in you, uh, Father. So uh, with this uh, freedom uh, that we have in Christ, uh, Father, as we continue in our worship as we uh, listen to your word, as we share a uh, time of communion later as well. May every part of our worship and our lifestyle, um, you know, point towards you and glorify you and make you known, Lord. Uh, we want to thank you. Guide us through this time. Uh, we pray us in Jesus' name. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope it's afternoon. Can anybody can hear? Can you all hear me perfect? Okay. Uh, when Yunus and Yunike were younger, Yunike had this, uh, uh, Yunus started to learn how to walk because she really wanted to walk. And Yunike is the opposite. She climbed up to things first before she could start to walk. From there, she get, she, uh, she would get down, uh, she would um, slide down on the uh, chair and she would learn how to walk that way. They tried to walk as much as they could, but they kept falling and falling and falling. And I kept picking them up, holding them up like this and putting them on my, uh, on my feet and kept walking. And uh, they are going to keep falling. Right? And they rely on me to uh, guide them, to teach them how to walk properly. I like them so much, even though they they uh, they uh, they kept falling and falling and falling. That's not what I meant. Not not even though I mean when they fall, I keep picking them up. I kept picking them up. Right? <laughs> my my point is, they relied on me and for strength, guidance, and direction. Right? We've been learning so much about the foundation of Christianity. What our identity in Christ? What what um, what our what our identity that 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 will shape our characters, right? And how we need to walk with Christ, so we can get to know Christ, so we can submit to Him to His wills. Right? Like from those things, we could have freedom in Christ, not freedom in the world. Freedom in Christ. We've been learning so much about the foundation uh, of the the uh, foundation of Christianity. Those basic things are really, really important uh, because Christ wants a relationship, not a religion. Right? We're going to take this chapter, what we learn from the foundation of Christianity, going into forward into 
the love, the perfect love of God and how it costs his life because he loves us so much. And we're taking this from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 through 9, from the uh, contemporary English version. And I'm going to read it to you. He was hated and rejected. His life was filled with sorrow and terrible sufferings. No one wanted to look at him. We despised him and said, he is a nobody. We suffered and endured great pain for us. Well, we thought his suffering was punishment from God. He was wounded and crushed because of our sins by taking our punishments. He made us completely well. All of us were like sheep that, one, that wander off. We had, we had each gone our own ways, but the Lord gave us the punishment we deserve. He was painfully abused, but he did not complain. He was, he was silent like, like a lamb being led to the butcher, as quiet as a sheep having its wool cut off. He was condemned to death without a fair trial. Who could have imagined what would happen to him? His life was taken away because of the sinful things people had done. He wasn't dishonest or violent, but he was buried in a tomb of cruel and rich people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we, uh, we thank you for your love, Father. Humble us open our hearts, open our souls so we can hear you as you, as you teach us things that, that, you know, that you want us to know more and more and more about you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for this gathering. In your name we pray. Amen. The cost of love. We live in a world of me, myself, and I. And, I, and I've, <laughs> I've said that so many times already. Wherever we go, we want, we want to be noticed for what we have, for what we do, right? for what, what we can accomplish. Ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, when they turned their backs on God, humans become corrupted. Sin enter, entered the world. We ignore, and what, we ignore what God wants Wants, wants us to do because we wanted to do what we wanted to do. We, saw, we, we, we focus our hearts on making a name for ourselves. Everything that you hear left and right, that's what the world is saying. Look what I have. Look what I can do. Look at my job. Look at how much money I have. We are too darkened by our own sin to find our, our way back to God and his kingdom. God's justice requires us that, be, that there be a price for our sin. Materialism, fixation on earthly possessions and idolatry, making idols for yourself are the strongest, temp, temp, the strongest temptation, one of the strongest temptations that the devil is, uh, is using us to get into his world. Okay? His world with full of temptation, his world of full of sin. So we can go down to his, his house in a war, warm, nice, toasty area. We become so accustomed to the world's ways and we forget about Christians. We forget about Jesus. I mean, that's what the, the, the goal of the devil, the world, is, is teaching. We make, they make sure that we forget about Jesus. And it's working. Sadly to say, it is working. More and more and more people are relying on the world. Like I mentioned to, to you in the past sermons, I saw this, this uh, cartoon character. There was two desks, 
One says, COVID is here. Learn how to be safe. Jesus is coming. Learn how to be safe. Guess which, which line they were in. The COVID line, zero on the Jesus is coming. Okay? That's what the world is wanting us to do. Right? We, begin to idol, we begin to idolize people on TV. We idolize singers, musicians, rich and famous. They don't even know us. And we idolize them. What is wrong with us? This is because of all, of all the sins that we have. And we are sinners. When God sent his only begotten son into this world, Jesus became our only hope. Did you all remember what the three kings brought to Jesus when he was born? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Focus on the myrrh part. Why did one of the wise men give myrrh? Myrrh is a, is a substance that can be used to embalm death. Because of this nice smell of myrrh and slowing the decay of the dead body. Why is that? Because God knew what was going to happen to, to his own son. Right? God says, I send my son into this world, not to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Because of the original sins of Adam and Eve, sins entered human beings. Right? The person, Jesus, is the only one that, 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 is willing to come in the middle of us, giving us a way. Even though he knows that he is hated and rejected, his life was filled with sorrow and terrible suffering. No one wanted to look at him. We despise him and even said he's a nobody. How many times the world said, that? how many times we said it? Jesus is a nobody. It was the past. It is the present. It is going to be the future that the world will continue to hate him. Right? It's, it, how am I supposed to say this? The world is mocking Jesus. The world is hating Jesus. The world is making sure that Jesus is a nobody. You know why? Because the world, the devil, is afraid of Jesus. Because the devil knows that the only way to the Father is through Jesus. No other way in this world that you, we can go have fun in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in his kingdom without the help of Jesus. Jesus, the name of Jesus is so powerful that when someone talks about it on the street, they would hate him. They would hate us. They would tell us to stop. Don't talk about it. But when other faith is talking about their own faith on the street, nothing happens. Why is that? Because the devil knows that Jesus is the only salvation. The only way, there is no other way. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one enters the Father but through me. It's like having, okay, when people say there should be, a, there must be another way. No, look at it this way. You have, you have so many keys. Try each one of them, which one fits. Although most of them fit, but only one fits and opens it. Put it that way. Right? There's only one way. When, when there was a, an event in Toronto 
where this man was talking about Jesus, and all of a sudden, he was attacked, telling, telling him to stop. Marking him. Marking him is the same thing as marking Jesus. And, they start, and the other people who hated him, who hated Jesus, started to dance, started doing dirty dancing, making fun of him, making fun of Jesus. Is that right or no? But when other faith is doing the exact same thing, nothing happens. That's how powerful Jesus is. Jesus said, they will, they will hate you because they hated me first. That's what Jesus said. It is, going to be, it, it is going to be a rough road, but he says, I will be with you. That's why Jesus was murdered, was hung on the cross. He was betrayed by one of his, one, one of his own disciples, Judas Iscariot. Guess for how much? 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces. That's how much his life worth. I don't know how much it costs now, 30 pieces of silver. But back then, right? the, the power of the, the evilness of money is even started back in the days. Right? The one called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver Jesus over to you? So they count, counted him out, 30 pieces of silver. The book, the book of Matthew said it. Jesus died for all, not for the chosen ones, not for the people of of Israel only, for the whole world. The whole world knows that Jesus, the name of Jesus is so powerful. God so loved the world that he died for us on the cross. Jesus tasted death for everyone, for me, for all of you, for all people in the world. But what did the world do to him? He, they, they hated him. They tried to put, to put things in our mind to make sure that we hate him too. The devil entices us with, hey, if I give you this amount of money or wealth, would you willing to come with me? Most people says, yes, sadly. But us, as the follower of God, we know that his way is the only way to, to be saved for salvation. When, when our identity is in Christ, is in him, we will become strong. Temptation will be like, okay, Harry, you want this? <laughs> nope, no thank you. Harry, do this. No thank you. But let me remind you, those temptations are very, very, very good. The devil will actually try to just grab your mind. What, you, what, what the devil messes up in your mind, it goes into your heart, it becomes who you are. Remember that, right? Jesus, was suffering. Jesus was in pain. Jesus was, was beaten up. For what? For us. As a parent, when I saw Unessa and Unika kept falling, I make sure that I grabbed them even when, <laughs> when, they when they talk about buying a skateboard, I get nervous. I get nervous. 
because I don't want them to fall. I don't want them to get hurt. And I asked them to buy helmet and elbow pads, maybe knee pads too, because I don't want them to get hurt. Right? And I'm sure, Peter, you will be doing the same thing. <laughs> right? That's how much I love them. I love them to eternity. So why would why would we what's the word? Why would we love some rich and famous person? And we wanted to be like that person. They don't even know us. Right? We caught up, we are so much, we so caught up in their richness and famousness and, and, and what they're doing. We try to look into their life outside of, of, uh, out, outside their own personal life. Of course, you're going to look so glamorous behind the, 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 the screen. We don't know what their life is. Right? So why are we loving, idolizing, I, I, um, um, making them uh, our idols? when they don't even know us. Why can't we make Jesus our idol? He died for us. He loved us so much that he's willing to die on the cross. Instead of going to the eternal flame that the, that the world is to get us into, Jesus says, hey, Come with me. I am the only way. There's no other way. Jesus says, come to me and I'll give you rest. Come to me and I'll show you how to live. Okay? I will show you how to live properly in me, through me, and for me. At the cross, Jesus offered himself as the only fully sufficient atoning sacrifice to pay the penalty for the sins of the whole world once for all time. Right? His blood is more, is more than enough for the, forgiveness, for the forgiveness of every sin. The past, the present, and the future Remember, when he died for us, he forgave us. He forgives all the sins of the world, the past, the present, and the future. It's not just about the, back on the, the past only, but also in the future. His blood is more than enough for the, for the forgiveness of sins, all of us. When he was on the cross, he took the sins of the world. And at that instant second, he was departed from, from the father, from his father. He felt all the sins of the world. And he felt the cruelty of the sins of the world. And he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? He said that because he... He loves us so much. Why have you forsaken me? That instant second, he was departed from, from the Father the moment he took all the sins of the world. And then after that, he says, it is finished. It is finished means that we are not a religion. We are not seeking for approval for God. Hey, God, I'll give you this much if you could give me more blessing. No, that's religion. God or Jesus already died for us on the cross and he says, it is finished. It means it's finished. Our sins are forgiven. We have freedom in Christ and through Christ now. Let us prepare our heart and soul 
as we enter his holy table, table of communion, let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we bow before you in, in full humility and ask you to examine our heart this evening, this afternoon. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you, Jesus. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion and unforgiveness that may, may be hindering our relationship with you. Father, we know that we are your beloved children, having received you into our heart and life and having accepted your death as penalty for our sinfulness. The price you paid covered us for all time and our desire is to live for you. Father Jesus, as we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us, we remember and celebrate your faithfulness, your faithfulness to us and to all who will receive you. We cannot begin to fathom the, the agonizing suffering of your death on the cross. Yet you took, you took those pain for each one of us. We were in your mind during your suffering, Father. We thank you, you died for us. Thank you for your perfect love and grace. Thank you that your death gave us a new eternal life in you and for you. As you instructed your disciples, we too receive, receive this bread in remembrance of you. In the, same, in, in the same way, Father, as we take this cup representing your blood, poured out from a splintered cross, we realize that you are the supreme sacrifice for all our sin, past, present, and future. Father God, because of your blood shed for us and your body broken for us, we can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. Thank, thank you, Jesus. You took the death that we deserve. You took our punishment. You, you took our pain in our life. And this, this evening, Jesus, we remember and celebrate the precious gift of life. You gave us through the blood that you spilled. Father God, while, while our relationship is secure with you, we know sin can break we know that sin can break our, our fellowship with you. We are still human, Jesus, and we often forget who we are and whose we are. You, you want to convict, not correct us, not to shame us. You love us perfectly. You will never disown us or leave us, not even for a second. You love us no matter what we do but sin hurts both our hearts and yours, Jesus. So before, before we take communion this afternoon, this evening, we are asking you to truly search our heart and reveal the, the hidden things for which to ask you for your forgiveness. Each time we take communion, Jesus, we want to recommit our life and our heart, our thoughts, are everything to you, Father. Fill us this evening and forever with your power of spirit. In your mighty name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For I receive, for I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take this bread, this is my body, which, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take this bread of life. 
in remembrance of him, the body of Christ. Let us take this cup at the new covenant. Do this as often as we, um, uh, we drink it in remembrance of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Again, Jesus, you fed us at your holy table, at your holy table with your own body and blood. By your word and supper, may we be led from this world of sorrow into eternal life in you, through you and for you, Jesus. You died for, for us on the cross and paid the enormous Christ for our sins so that we so that we we are forgiven of all our sins and receive your indwelling life thank you Jesus let us never forget the enormous price that you paid on the cross on our behalf let us never forget that we have been bought with a price your life Jesus let us live for you from this day on knowing that your body was broken and your blood was spilled for us, Jesus, what a privilege to be able to come before your throne of grace and partake the precious sacraments of bread and wine in remembrance of your atoning sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right? Just remember, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus broke and drank wine with his disciples, we are to do the same today. We do so in a community, sharing in a, com in a common values of remembering why he came, why he died, and why he rose again from the dead. Right? We are to commune with one another, with our risen Lord, sharing the body, sharing his blood, so we can be free, we can have freedom through Christ. Coming communion, communion is is uh, is coming uh, coming together, a gathering with our brothers and sisters in Christ to share our common beliefs. Remember, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all heading to a toasty, hot, warmy area that, that's called hell. This is the fate of the human being, but God's grace was so powerful so perfect that he sent his only son knowing that he is going to die he's going to suffer and die on the cross his perfect son is being murdered on the cross for us jesus says come to me get away with me and you will recover your life i'll show you how to take a real rest walk with me and work with me Watch how I do it. Learn my unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting. Keep company with me. And I will promise you, you will learn to live freely and lightly. Thank you. Amen. Before, before I go, 